fucking dolt. How can you change your own prediction? I might change my mind. I'm unpredictable. Are those 3D glasses? Yes! Are we in 3D Everything now? Everything is in 3D now. This is so cool. <laughs> <laughs> You're a fucking Nimrod. <laughs> oh my god. This uh, is really fucking trippy. I love this. Oh god. Where the hell did you get them? Amazon. Why? Because the Three Stooges had two features that were done in 3D. And I want to watch them in 3D. I've been watching 3D shit for the past couple nights on like YouTube. Let me see. Them. It's fu- it's fucking awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, it's right, right, fucking yeah, trippy. Right now, you look like one of the, uh, any gang member in a 50s movie. One of them's always wearing 3D glasses. Yeah. <laughs> Man, you, you can call me Spider. You can call me Spider. Spider, buddy. Oh, boy. <laughs> How do I know your name's Lisa? Because I'm the weasel, buddy. <laughs> Check out Fresh Nugs. We the juice. Oh. Yeah. No, no, Mr. Tony, no reason to juice. Yeah, because I might no, I might change my mind at the last minute because I got like three albums through in my head. So do I. So I'm gonna see if I actually pick the right one. Yeah, I got I got a couple <laughs> kicking around in there too. Um, what? What? <laughs> I, uh, I I have a couple kicking around. All right. Um, two are guilty pleasures. One is just out of the wheelhouse, mm-hmm. and I'm not gonna know until I. Until it comes out of me, <laughs> until it comes out of uh, out of out of me mouth. Yep. What I'm picking, but I think I know which it could be. I'm I'm smart. We'll see. I am smart. All right. So, how was everybody's week? Oh, everybody's Are week's you, going good. Yeah, and uh, we had a very interesting thing happen at the dealership. Yeah, I saw that. Um, I've been there 23 years. I've never seen this happen. Uh huh. A tractor trailer came and dropped off a windshield, and when he went to pull out back onto MacArthur Road, because of the heat, the wires were sagging a little bit, Uh and the left front corner of his trailer snagged a wire, and as he kept going, it just lifted the whole... You said this has never happened before? Not there. Wait, wait, wait. No, no. I'm saying you said this has never happened before there. Correct. Go ahead. Continue. Why? What happened? No. Keep going. Well, anyway, it, it snagged... And as he kept going, it ended up twisting the cab sideways, the whole trailer sideways. We thought it was going to tip over and take off, you know, cars that we had, you know, in the front line there. So we moved those, and they had to call, uh, who the hell came over? I don't remember who came over, but they had big, heavy equipment to move that freaking shit, twist it, everything else. They didn't get it off the wire until a little after 5 o'clock. Well, I'm going to tell you something. Uh, as somebody who has a little bit of experience with lines, I thought of you. Um, I would be willing to bet that, in addition to the uh, in addition to the heat playing a factor, which it undoubtedly did, um, you know, because as always, heat makes things. No, no, no. It's not the heat that does it. It's um, because of all know, the construction as going as on down always, there. Heat makes things. And the voltage in the lines, there's so much voltage going through the lines, oh it makes it heavier. God oh my. I mean, it could be from air conditioning, but I think it's probably from all the big buildings there. No. Look, I was in electrical. I know how electricity works. They're, fire, they're either phone or cable wires. They're low voltage, you fucking nitwit. But anyway. Very strong wire, I must say. Yes. Um, but one thing I will say is, in addition to the heat causing the sag. Yeah. I bet you five bucks he jumped the curb. <laughs> we thought that, but where he pulled out, there was no curb. Hmm. Oh, shit. CSI that's, Gilboy. That's exact, no, that's exactly what we thought. But when I asked the guy, that they, they said, no, he pulled right out normal like every other trucker does. But that's what I said. He must have popped the curb and then whacked it. But no. And when that thing got, when that was moved, the wire, whatever retains him to poles, it got removed from one pole. It was at eye level. Yeah. And they must have came by sometime after we closed and fixed that wire because that would have been dangerous. Yeah, it's a support steel. Yeah. Um, Amanda is joining us right now. Uh, she says, Buffalo Pizza and the Three Stooges. I'm thinking that's not in reference to the glasses either. No, she got... Uh, we got you. We got Tony's tonight. Uh, and oh. I didn't even notice her there, but Amanda was there as well uh, in the parking lot. And uh, she, she got Buffalo Pizza and... The Three Stooges. I call Mo. Oh, that's fine with me. I'm, I'm a perfect Larry. Shemp. 
No. No. Joe Dorita. No. no come on. Come no. on. Yeah. What's up, Doug? He's. <laughs> Doug says, "What's up, crackers?" Hey. So, Hello. anything interesting with you? Not really. Yeah. I will request a five-minute pause on cussing because Ryan wants to clip something. Okay, what does he want to clip? Well, his his he's gonna uh, his um, his teacher gave them a '90s quiz. Okay, and showed them all these things that oh yeah were in the '90s, and the one thing that his teacher said was in the nineties uh-huh. was an easy bake oven. Okay. No, not from the nineties. No easy bake ovens were from the seventies. 63. Yeah. Oh, 63 started. Okay. Yeah. Cause, um, like I, I, I remember those when we were kids, jelly shoes. Those are nineties. Here, here's or eighties. I thought they were eighties. Uh, yeah. Uh, how about slap bracelets? Those were those were also right on the cusp because they had them in the ski ball. Right. Yeah. Um. We were we gave them away as prizes in ski ball, and I remember just going around whacking everybody, in the, <laughs> and that was like right on the cusp of eighty nine ninety. Yeah. Hmm. How about the Sony Discman? Oh. Uh, yeah, the Discman was awesome. That was nineties. Here's something nineties, uh, and, and it kind of plays into what we do. Mm-hmm. The Winged Eagle WWF title, oh, yeah. title belt. Yep. Oh, In fact, I if, if I would have known this, I could have brought it down <laughs> and showed it to the camera. <laughs> yeah. Also, another great thing that was 90s is when you had to have a cassette uh, that went into this man that sat on the seat. Well. With your folder full of discs. Yes. But you also had, on my in my Celica, I had a little mount. That had a little uh, plate on it with vibration dampeners in it, so whenever you hit a fucking <laughs> yeah. bump, your CD would watch skip. the language. Sorry, that's uh. right. Damn it! Five minute pause. I don't. Well, don't worry. I think I think Ryan got enough to to show <laughs> that you know. Now, now I don't want to say his last name, uh-huh. so I don't want the teacher to get upset at him. Well, no way, he's going to show it to him. Never mind. Give him more homework too. <laughs> right, <laughs> right. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean there was we had we. We did have some pretty cool stuff in the '90s. The '90s was was the '90s was a time for great technological innovation. Yes, but it was all the new technological innovation. Yeah, where where things were a little bit. It was the start of everything. Yeah, and it went from zero to a hundred like. Oh every yeah, year. You, yeah. You had to you had to have the. I mean, you went from getting a you know a cassette player in your vehicle to having a disc man to having a disc man that didn't skip. <laughs> Doug says uh, that teacher must have rode the short bus and kicked the windows. I think you, I think you meant lick the windows, Doug. Uh, <laughs> come on, use the technology right at your fingertips. There you go. Yeah, but now in his defense, I will say this: he did show an Easy Bake Oven that was from the '90s as a picture to the kids. Okay, which is now, which at that time was styled more like a microwave. Yeah, instead of an oven. Right. <laughs> Whoever who would have ever thought you could bake a cake. With a seventy-five watt light bulb, yeah, and now that incandescents are gone, I mean, yeah, I, how, that, how, you can't the easy bake oven's gone. Yeah, it's it's uh, it's a thing of the past. Oh, so it's light bright, but you know, and the no, no, the light bright is still work yeah. because you weren't using heat. Oh, correct. And, and yeah, the yeah. and the best part was I'm I'm researching this just to like, and I saw like the whole history of the easy bake oven. I loved it that they made an easy bake oven for boys called the Queasy Bake, and I was like. It's an oven, right? Boys can cook, right? <laughs> it's it's that's not a gendered thing. Well, <laughs> speaking of guys yes. cooking, yeah. Uh, Sunday, we were at we went up to Doug's. He had a heck of a barbecue, mm-hmm. um, burgers and dogs and fireball chicken, like chicken marinated in fireball whiskey oh my, and oh then my. spices. Oh my! All kinds of freaking salads, and Doug made he Doug bought a cauldron. Right. Okay, like a fifteen-gallon cauldron. Okay, fucking big cast iron, some bitch. <laughs> and we built an open fire, and Doug made gumbo in that in that some bitch. <laughs> oh my lord! Oh my god, was it good? Who? Oh. Uh, thank you again, Doug, for having us up. That was fucking. Um, that was awesome. We had a we had a hell of a good time. Ate a bunch of food. I I must have ate my weight in food that day. Oh my. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I almost called you down. <laughs> oh, what? When? When would that been? 
Uh, Sunday. I don't remember what I was doing. Yeah, because uh, Doug lives right close yeah. to you. I yeah, I don't even remember what I was doing Sunday. It's been one of those. It, this has been one of those weeks that just goes by quickly. Well, yes. Monday, well, I was off for the holiday. Tuesday, I spent in front of my desk doing pay in front of my computer doing paperwork. The last two days. Got to live, or got to drive, got to drive, got to drive to <laughs> shit town. Got to drive, got to drive, got to drive. I hate that town. I was in York the past two fucking days. Oh, the gateway of Pennsylvania music. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Each day, 100 and, 101 miles approximately to get to the first poll on the job. Dear Lord. Yesterday was 115 polls. Today was 110. <laughs> yeah. Woo. Yeah. That's fun times. Oh, fuck. Yeah, dude. I mean, nine hours yesterday, 10 today. Oh, and of course, 181 going through fucking York. Okay, 181. Uh-huh. Yeah. Of course, they're fucking doing construction. What? And I have to replace poles on it. Oh. Yeah, this is great. I made, made it made my freaking it made my nipples hard. It really did. <laughs> oh Jesus! <laughs> That's what I said. Oh Jesus Christ! <laughs> <laughs> uh, and 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 the, the thing of it is, the company that wants to attach their uh, Shenandoah cable. Oh boy. Okay. Not not that Shenandoah. Shendo Shendo no, cable. No, no they're yeah Shendo, but Shendo Valley down in West Virginia <laughs> is where they're headquartered. Okay. Uh, Shentel. Oh, no, no, you can just lower the cable here. No. <laughs> First off, the the pole is like, it's a, it's a class seven pole. So it's like, it. well, I, I was going to say it's as skinny as me, but I'm not real, actually really skinny. But um, um, it's like a fucking tiny little peanut pole. Got you. Oh, oh you can lower it down. No, we're replacing the pole and you're going to fucking pay for it. <laughs> uh, Doug says... It, uh, if it wouldn't have been a bit short planned, I would have invited the guys. Glad you liked my redneck cooking. Oh, uh, yeah, dude. Uh, yeah. Fucking awesome, awesome food. All right. Yeah. Awesome food. Doug, um, like Doug and I were talking uh, Saturday nights during haunt season. Mm-hmm. We're going to uh, oh, alternate again. Alternate again at the haunted house. So. That way, you know, Chuck and Linda aren't always buying pizza every yes. Saturday night mm-hmm. or, yeah. you know, and something different than freaking hot dogs and nah. hot dog and a handshake. <laughs> <Hey. laughs> Taquitos. Taquitos. Yeah. Yes. And we need to make sure that Dominic puts the cylindrical meat objects on the roller grill. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, so today I, I, I. I want to refund on these two and a half hours of my life. I was listening to an episode of the Joe Rogan podcast. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, that's bad enough. That's torturous enough mm-hmm. because he's turned into a complete right wing idiot. Okay. Then why were you listening? Cause Hulk Hogan was on. Oh, oh okay. okay. And I wanted to see what bullshit came out of Hogan's mouth this time. <laughs> um, like dude, his lies are fucking astounding. Oh no. Um, but, I, you know, if you wade through the bullshit of Hulk Hogan, like um, he was, you know, watching Pride fights in the 1970s when Pride didn't become a thing to all the 90s, um, stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, he was the first guy that they gave Brock Lesnar to when he when Brock came back from the UFC and yada, yada, yada. If you if you take the Hogan bullshit out of it, there was a few good little tidbits and one of the most interesting tidbits today was they were talking about Brock Lesnar. All right. I'm going to give you a, a few statistics on what an athletic freak Brock Lesnar is. Didn't he play for was. the Vikings? Well, hang on. Okay, sorry. He, uh, when he left the WWF the first time, uh, he, he didn't want to travel anymore. He said, fuck this. I'm going to go try and play football. Now, keep in mind, he had not played football since he was in high school. Okay. Okay? Mm -hmm. He didn't play football in college. He hadn't played since high school. So, he did it the right way. Instead of relying on his name, he actually went to the NFL Combine. Okay. 
Okay. His measurables. He was six foot three and two hundred and eighty three pounds when he reported to the combine. All right. He ran a forty yard dash. Now keep in mind, six three, mm-hmm. two hundred and eighty three pounds. Mm. 40-yard dash in 4.7 seconds. Get the hell out of here. Faster than three-time defensive player of the year, J.J. Watt. J.J. Watt's 40 time at the combine was 4.84. Holy shit. So, 283 pounds. Yeah, yeah. A 4.740. His vertical leap. Okay? Mm Mm-hmm. Standing vertical leap. Now, keep in mind, you saw this guy do box jumps up onto the ring apron Mm -hmm. in WWE. His standing vertical at the NFL Combine was measured at 35 inches. Wow. Okay. Hmm. Put that into perspective. It seems like, because I think the ring is higher than than three feet, isn't it? Yes. Well, that's higher than defensive end Robert Quinn. Also higher than Anthony Barr, Chris Long, and Cliff Averill. Wow. Who are all all pro linemen. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Standing broad jump, not a running long jump, mm-hmm. a standing broad jump. Keep in mind, once again, he's moving 283 pounds from a standstill. Mm-hmm. That standing broad jump, 10 feet. Get the fuck That's out. crazy. And here is probably the most impressive feat. They do... A 225-pound bench press for reps, mm-hmm. okay, as your as a strength measurement. All right. How many times do you think Lesnar repped 225? I don't even want to guess. Knowing uh, knowing Lesnar, he, he probably – I'm just thinking that it's like they, they stopped counting. I was going to say they at, probably at like, had to tell him to stop. a certain number, it's like, okay, like maybe at 75, you're done here. No, no, no. He didn't something. go that high. Okay, because I'm just thinking like he just won't stop. He repped it. Now, 225-pound bench press. Mm-hmm. He repped that shit 30 times. Wow. Wow. Yep. I would love to... I, I'm going to get on YouTube, and I'm going to fucking try to find video of Brock at the Combine. Because mm-hmm. I want to see the bench press thing and see if he just stopped. <laughs> or, if he, or if he actually, yeah, like, he okay. Suffered, yeah. Or if he was suffering. Yeah. Mm. Unfucking real That guy is a genetic freak. Hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah. Now, keep in mind, he comes back to the UFC, right? After after having a bout with diverticulitis, and he still hadn't been cured of the diverticulitis. His first fight back in the UFC, okay? He fights a guy by the name of Alistair Overeem, who was affectionately known by us MMA fans as Overoid. Hmm. When Overeem started his fighting career, he fought at 185 pounds. Okay. By this time, he was cutting to make 265 for heavyweight. And he was gassed to the fucking moon. Because this is before USADA was doing the testing. The United States uh, Mm Anti-Doping Association. Mm -hmm. All you had to do was pass a piss test the day of the weigh-ins. Masking agents made that easy. Mm. Okay? And if you cycle off for 30 days, you're, you're golden. Yeah. Overeem... Was gassed at a fucking gills. Okay. And Lesnar, he lost the fight, but he stood toe to toe with him. Mm-hmm. And a kick to the guts is what stopped him. Oh. While he's got diverticulitis. Yeah. That, uh. Ooh. Yeah. He ended up having like a foot or a foot or two foot I was of his. I going to say he has a scar on his. Yeah. He ended up yeah. having a foot or two of his, of his intestinal tract taken mm. out. So, yeah. Brock, I mean, I got you guys know I have a ton of respect for Brock Lesnar. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, NCAA heavyweight champion, UFC heavyweight champion, and a freak athlete and a great professional wrestler on top of it. Mm. You know, uh, and but to hear that is just unfreaking real. Now man. he did get picked up by the Vikings, didn't he? But he didn't make no, the roster. No, he didn't make the roster. Yeah, uh, he was actually, I, I believe, he was the last guy cut. Mm. He. he he made it. To, he made it the final cut day. I but did not make the fifty three man roster. I read something interesting that I never realized. Um, that this is how shit gets done when it's cutting day for the final time. I guess if you're tenured on a team, 
like you have your, your five years with a team, if they cut you, you don't go into the free agent market. And the Jets wanted to keep this one player, so they told their punter, you know, they talked to him and said, hey, you know, we're going to cut you, but we're going to bring you back. Yeah. And I never, that's, I never noticed, I never knew about that loophole. They do that, they do that all the time. Yeah, well, you, it's kind of a thing, we're going to cut you. Mm-hmm. Because we need to make roster space. Correct. But don't sign anywhere else because we're bringing you back. Well, if he if if you're not tenured, anybody can pick you up and you can but, sign with anybody yeah, else. Yeah, well, you if you're an unrestricted free agent. Correct. Correct. Right. But a lot of times teams will waive that waive that designation and make you a UFA. Yeah. Um, but you know, we football starts tonight, boys. Yes, it does. Uh and he's, he's already getting pointers at home, and one of my one of my one of my te- one of my teams is already su- str- struggling. Oh my! Yeah, because in uh, another league that I'm in, I have Kelsey, so no Kelsey this week. Yeah, Ryan mm-hmm. told him that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I I had Kelsey in another league too. Oh, you think my scoring system's fucking recalculous? <laughs> Jesse I've always start, said that. Jesse started a league. Yeah. Mm. I'm projected 958 points this week. Is he taking my idea? The all points league? Uh, no, no. It's it, like there's no defensive points. Just like one point per passing yard. Yes, it's fucking recocky. Yeah, that's awesome. I, I'm I'm projected to win. I'm projected to put up like 958. It's fucking recocky. Maybe you will know who this guy is, because I looked at his stats from last year and I'm like, I can't believe he's a wide receiver. For the Las Vegas Raiders. Uh huh. His name is Terrell Owens. DeAndre Carter. Yeah. He's my opponent's flex player. He's projected to put up 55 points. I am not helping you. I, I'm just saying, I can't believe that. <laughs> I'm not saying help me. I'm not See, helping you. I just thought that was an odd number because all I looked I'm, at his stats. All I am going to tell you is there is a board on the league's homepage that you should read. Huh. Why? I'm going to tell you the same thing. But I don't like reading this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> not my fucking problem. I will tell fucking Ad Drop Galgosi the same thing. Why? What happened? Because he said about the scoring, about ESPN's Fakakta scoring system. I know. All I'm going to tell you is look a little past your fucking roster pages. Hang on, hang on. He shouldn't be bitching about scoring in any league at all. Yeah. And with that, until next week. Fantasy football talk is closed. <laughs> no, we're not going to talk about it next week either. Oh, yes, we will. Oh, no. Oh, no. yes, we will. Win or lose, we will talk about it because I got champ first week. Oh, really? Yeah, that's how that's how shitty his league. He, 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 you know, he thinks he's going to be the big guy in the prison yard punching out the biggest guy. Okay? I see how it is. Look. Just because you're taller and almost as fat as him doesn't make you the biggest guy. No, I mean in the league. No, because Gary, Gary's bigger than you. Figure, Mark is taller than you. Figuratively speaking, I, and, I am and, the big dog. Andy, no, and, no, Andy, going to put you in some fucking sort of uh, some sort of sugar hole he learned from Al Snow. Uh, <laughs> you guys are in my yard. No, these are my bitch. This my yard. <laughs> <laughs>